All right then gang, so in the last video we fleshed out this route handler right here, this get request for forward slash books, whereby we found all the books and we returned them right here. And then we tested this out in the browser and we got all that JSON back. Now the next thing I'd like to do is create a route for a single book, a specific book. So if we go to forward slash books and then forward slash, you know, some kind of ID, the ID of that book, it would go ahead and get that single book for us and send that back. So that's what we're going to do down here. So it's going to be another get request. So we can say app.get and then the route is going to be forward slash books and then it's going to be forward slash some kind of route parameter, some changeable part of the route. And in an express app, the way we denote a route parameter is by doing a colon, first of all, and then whatever we want to call the route parameter. Now I'm going to call it ID. You can call it beans if you want. It doesn't really matter. But ID makes sense to me since that's what we're passing through in the route. All right, so let's do our handler function and we're going to have a request and a response object in here. And what we need to do first of all in this function is get whatever the route parameter is. Now, if I went to forward slash books forward slash one, two, three, then the route parameter value would be one, two, three. I need to access that and we can get it from the request object. So I can say the ID is equal to request dot params to access the route parameter and then whatever the parameter was called I called it ID right here so I'd say dot ID so this right here would get me access to whatever the value is in this URL all right so let me cut that for now and what I'd like to do is get a reference to the collection so we'll say DP dot collection just like we did before and we pass in books as the collection right so books now I have a reference to that collection and what we want to do is find a single document inside that collection. So I'm going to use the find one method, which I think we saw earlier on in the course. So this finds us one particular document and we can pass through a filter to say basically which document to find. And we're going to use the ID property to try and filter which document we get back. So it's underscore ID. That is the name of the ID property or ID field in a MongoDB documents and we say that's equal to some kind of ID. Now we don't just paste in the request.params.id value right here because this needs to be a special object ID type. Remember when we saw an ID in MongoDB it was something like this object ID and then whatever the ID was inside here. So that would be request.params.id. All right, and that's what we need to do. Now this object ID thing, this comes from MongoDB, which we installed. So make sure you require it up here. So const and then object ID in curly braces is equal to require and then MongoDB, all right? So now this is a special object ID right here that we're passing request.params.id into. And that's going to find us the document associated with that particular ID. All right then, so next up, we want to tack on a then method to this where we can do something with the document that's returned. So we take in that document in the function and we just want to send a response to the user. So I'll say response.status and we're going to set the status to be 200. And then we want to send back some JSON and what we want to send back is the document itself that we get back from MongoDB. We can also tack on a catch block right here to catch any kind of error. So we'll take that into the function. And then all I want to do is send back a different JSON response to the client in this case. So response, and then we'll give it a status of 500 to say server error. And then .json will send back an error property on this JSON object and that's going to say could not fetch the documents. All right. And that's pretty much it for now. So let's give this a whirl in the browser. Okay. So right here, I've got all of the JSON we got back from the last lesson when we made this request to forward slash books. And I'm just going to grab one of the IDs. So this one right here, I'm going to grab that. And the title of that book is The Light Fantastic. So that's the book we should get back if I paste in this ID at the top and press enter. And we can see we get The Light Fantastic back. Awesome. Let's try a different one. Let's grab this ID right here, which is the color of magic. So let me paste in at the end like so. And yep, it works. Awesome. Now watch what happens if we just type in 
a load of rubbish here, right? So random ID, it doesn't exist. If we press enter, then we can see a Beeson type error. Argument passed in must be a string of 12 bytes or a string of 24 hex characters. So what's going on here? Why is this causing this weird error? Well, it's this object ID constructor right here that's causing the error whenever we get an ID that isn't valid. And when I say that the ID isn't valid, I don't mean that the ID doesn't match any of the documents in the collection. Instead, what I mean is that the way the ID string is formatted isn't valid. So when we pass an ID string into the object ID constructor, it needs to be a string which is 12 bytes or 24 hex characters. So when a string which isn't any of those is passed in, it causes the error. So ideally what we need to do before we try and pass this ID into the constructor is a little check to see if the string ID is a valid one. Unfortunately, we can use a method given to us by object ID to verify it. So I'm gonna do a little check, a little if check at the top of the handler to do this. And inside the parentheses, I'll say object ID and then we're going to use a method on that called is valid and invoke that. And inside that method, we can pass in the ID that we want to check. In our case, that's going to be the request params ID. So what this is going to do is evaluate to true if the string ID is valid and false if it's not. So we only want to try and make the object ID and fetch the document if this is true and if the string ID is valid. So let me cut all of this and paste it into the if block right here. So then we're only trying to fetch a document, right, if the ID is valid. Now also, we want to add an else clause because then we can send back an error if the ID string is not valid. So let's do that. And inside the else clause, we can just send back some kind of response. So we'll say response dot status, first of all, and we'll apply a status of 500. Then we'll add on the JSON method, and we're gonna send back a JSON object with an error property. And that error can be something like not a valid document ID or something like that, right? So now let's give this a try again in the browser. So then, this is the details for a single book right here using this ID. And let me just refresh to make sure this is still working. Yep, it is. Now, if we add on a random character at the end or a few random characters like ABC, this is not gonna be a valid object ID. So if I press enter, then we're gonna get back that custom error. Awesome, so that's working. And this can be anything at the end. It really doesn't matter. If I press enter, we're gonna get back this error. So that's working and this is still working to get a single document. What happens if we just change one of these characters? So this last character is a one. If I change that to a two, what's gonna happen? Well, this right here is still a valid object ID. It's still 24 hex characters long, okay? So it's not gonna not pass that if check where we check that it's valid. It is gonna pass that, but we're gonna then try to request a document that doesn't exist in the database, okay? Now, MongoDB in this case is just gonna send back null. So where a document doesn't exist, but the ID is valid, then it sends back null. And you could handle this in the API on the server if you wanted to, or you could handle this on the front end. It really doesn't matter, it's up to you. But just know that at the minute, if we try to request a document that doesn't exist, but the ID is valid, we get null back as a response, all right? So then, that is us fetching a single document now. In the next lesson, we're gonna switch from using the browser to make requests to a tool called Postman.